Hi everyone, Michelle here with Just For Sweets and today you are going to quarantine with me meals on a budget in this time that we're all sitting at home and a lot of us aren't working. We really, really need to pinch pennies. So I'm going to show you how to make a budget-friendly breakfast, lunch, and dinner as well as a healthy snack with things that I had in my pantry because it's just a few ingredients. So I hope you enjoy all of these and if you are not a subscriber please hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell and the like, the thumbs up uh, because that helps my channel to grow. I appreciate all of you stopping by and if you have any ideas drop those in the comments below of what you'd like to see me do. So let's get going and let's make us some yummy, yummy food for pennies. This is my daily routine of vitamin C and zinc that I have. It's an immune booster that I get from Melaleuca. I will put the information for that in the description box below, but let's get going with cooking. This is our sourdough bread, which is our fav favorite, sorry, in the family. So I have that along with two eggs, some milk and some butter. And I actually have some cheese too, which is not pictured. And we are going to begin by turning the stove on like a medium heat. Do not mind my stove being dirty. I had just cooked on it previously and did not wash it before I did this video, so I apologize. Uh, but you wanna go ahead and start with your two eggs, get your toast. This is big bread, so I cut it in half. And you're gonna do the two eggs with a splash of milk and go ahead and just whisk that together. You're gonna wanna put a dab of butter into the pan. Now, if you prefer not to use butter, you can use a spray grease instead, um, but I always use a little bit of butter for flavor. So I go ahead and I melt that in the pan before I put in the whisked eggs. And the toast is going. Make sure you keep an eye on your toast so you don't burn it unless you like burnt toast. So we take the hot pan and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pour those eggs inside the pan and get those going. And I typically use a rubber spatula or a wooden spoon to mix my eggs. And you just wanna kind of scramble them up the way you scramble your eggs. Now here the eggs are almost completely done and scrambled. This is the point where I add a handful of shredded cheese and you can use your salt and pepper at this time if you like. So I go ahead and throw that on top and then I wanna go ahead and scramble that cheese in so that it melts. Here is the toast and I put a little bit of butter on it because sourdough tends to be a little bit dry. You do not have to do that step, but we like a little bit of butter on it. Then we take the scrambled eggs with cheese and we put those on each slice of toast and voila, you have a breakfast. Now my daughter likes to put some hot sauce over the top, but this is one of her favorite go-tos in the morning. And so I hope you enjoy this one. And this one is really, really budget friendly. So for lunch, we decided to do some refrigerator nachos. And what I mean by those is we use leftovers out of our fridge and some of the items that we have. Now, typically I would put tomatoes on there, maybe some refried beans, but I had some chips. I had some leftover chili, as you see right here, because we had had chili dogs one night. I have a little bit of salsa in a jar and I have some jalapenos and some sour cream. So this was like the perfect nacho for me for something quick and easy. Uh, the chili did have meat in it, so it did have a little bit of protein involved in there. Now I'm not saying these are all healthy, but they definitely are some good go-tos with things that you have in your refrigerator or things that are more budget friendly. So I just start by putting the chips on a plate. This is gonna be a microwavable thing. Now you can do this in a skillet and do it in your oven if you like. So I just take the chips and I take this leftover chili and I go ahead and pile it right on top. Thank you. 
Now the chili I did preheat in the microwave for about a minute and a half to get it nice and warm before I put it on the chips. And then you're gonna add a substantial amount of cheese or however much cheese you like on your nachos. So I just kind of sprinkle that all over the top. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in the microwave for about a minute a minute to a minute and a half, depending on your microwave. And here they are, fresh out of the microwave. Now I cooked them a little long, I think, so then I added some more shredded cheese on top, so I just had a little bit more cheese. And then you're gonna wanna go ahead and top it with sour cream, if you like sour cream, or if you have guacamole, or even just avocados. Um, I just did a couple scoops of sour cream, and then I poured over the uh, salsa that I had in my pantry, which let me tell you, is amazing and nice and spicy. And then I also add my favorite item, which is jalapenos in a jar. Um, but if you have fresh jalapenos, you can do that. You can also do like tomatoes, chives, whatever you like on your nachos. This is the guacamole salsa that I use and you just pour it on and then you are ready to go. Okay, let's do dinner. And this is what I did for dinner. This is one of my daughter's absolute favorites. She loves chicken wings. She's a chicken wing connoisseur. So I decided to make buffalo chicken wraps. So I have this Wild Tree Blazin' Buffalo Blend, and then you can use your favorite buffalo wing sauce. I kind of doctor mine up a little bit. You'll see that in this video. And um, I put them in a pan. I had already done this part, so I forgot to record it. So I put three chicken breasts in a pan with the Blazin' Buffalo Blend. You can use just salt and pepper if you want. You can use cayenne. And then I put the buffalo wing straight from the uh, bottle on top. And then I add a few pats of butter just to have a little bit of oil in the pan or you know prevent anything from sticking and make kind of a sauce for it and then i bake it in the oven on 400 degrees and these were still kind of frozen so they took about 40 minutes now everybody's oven is different so you want to make sure and check your chicken and make sure it is cooked thoroughly this is some homemade ranch that i made a few days ago and i could not find a lid for my jar so it has a bag on top and then we have some romaine lettuce Feel free to use iceberg or whatever kind of lettuce you like. You have large tortilla shells that you are going to wrap them in. So here they go into the oven. And now I'm going to prepare my wing sauce that I put on the side that we can dip in or put on the wrap itself. So I use a wing sauce out of the bottle and I always add a little bit of ketchup to it. It spreads it out a little bit, gives it a little bit more consistency and then makes it maybe a little bit less spicy for everybody. Um, so I go ahead and do that. You wanna whisk that together over like a medium heat just until it starts to boil. And then what I usually do is I turn the heat off. There's that oven again and I add, I know, you see this? I add about a half a stick of butter. Uh, I put that half a stick of butter in. Once this has boiled, I let it start to melt and then I turn the oven off or the stove off. Now we are going to get our lettuce ready. So I cut the ends of the romaine off. I do rinse it, which I don't show you, but I always rinse my lettuce and then I kind of towel dry it with a paper towel. As you see, I'm trying to squeeze the moisture out of it. Now we wanna begin um, cutting or chopping the lettuce. I just do small shreds or you can shred your lettuce. I just do small little cuts so that I get kind of more of a shredded lettuce, not big chunks. And so you just continue to do that until you're done. Thank you. 
At this point, you see that the sauce is boiling. This is where I tell you to put in that half stick butter. You go ahead and you let it start to melt and you start to whisk it in. However, you do wanna turn the heat off when it is halfway melted because you don't want the butter to start separating from the sauce. So it's important that you turn that heat off and just let that butter mix in naturally and then just kind of whisk it together. And then there you go, voila, you have a buffalo sauce ready to serve on the side of your wrap. Now my daughter likes shredded cheese in her buffalo chicken wrap. I prefer to have it without cheese. So everybody's different. So go ahead and get that shredded cheese out if you wanna add that to it. Uh, we decided this night we didn't have much in the house as far as like sides go and we were burned out on potatoes. So we decided to have some steamed broccoli and that's what you see. Here is the chicken pulled out of the oven. You can see I cut it in half to make sure it was done because the first time I checked it, it was not. You see that there's the sauce in there. And then I go ahead and I cut the chicken. You can shred it if it's moist enough, but I just kind of go ahead and cut it into chunks. And I cut the chunks in half, as you will see as we go along. Then I go ahead and I just stir the chicken in with all that sauce that it cooked in and then that gives it a little bit of extra moisture and flavor and then it is ready to go inside your wrap. Here it is all done. It was so delicious and smelled so good. Okay, and now it's time to wrap. So I took this tortilla, this is a burrito size shell like I showed you at the beginning, and I did heat it up in the microwave for about 15 seconds. Now I am adding the buffalo chicken to the inside of the wrap, and I'm doing it pretty much dead center. And just put enough in there that you've got a good amount piled up, but not too much that you can't close the wrap. So next we're gonna to top it with that buffalo sauce that we made in the beginning. And I just do a couple spoonfuls over the top to give it some extra buffalo sauce flavoring and some extra heat. Then we are adding our shredded romaine lettuce. Like I said, you can use iceberg if you prefer. Then I'm going to add a drizzle or two of my homemade ranch dressing and after this, I decided that I had forgotten to put the cheese in my daughter's wrap. So I have to go back in and do the cheese. But first I will show you how I wrapped it up. So I fold the outsides in and then I use my hands and kind of tuck all the goodies in and then just roll as tight as I can. So this ended up being my wrap because I had forgotten the cheese in it and then I make my daughter a new one. And here you go, this is what it looks like when you cut it open. It was amazingly delicious. And these are one of my favorite things to make along with my daughter's favorite thing. And like I said, I served it with a side of broccoli. Next, I'm gonna show you how I just put the cheese inside. I'm not gonna do the rewrapping and everything, but you can see that um, I added the cheese before I added the lettuce, so right after the sauce. And I think I put the ranch on first. You can do it whatever order you like. And then here it is wrapped with cheese. So that is my buffalo chicken wrap. And this one's super easy, pretty cost effective and absolutely delicious. And next we are going to make our healthy dessert slash snack. What you're gonna need is some uh, unsweetened cocoa, some rolling oats. I got these in a bulk section. Uh, I have some chocolate chips and you are going to need approximately two good sized bananas that are completely ripe. I have four pictured here, but it does end up being only two.
So after I measure it out, it is one cup of oats. That's what you're going to begin with. And yes, I have to have my coffee while I do this. You can sprinkle as many chocolate chips in as you like. And then I use approximately two heaping tablespoons of the dark uh, unsweetened cocoa. And the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna take the two bananas, peel them and put them in the bowl so that we can smash them until they are really well smashed. What I'm using to smash it is a large serving fork. It is not just a regular dinner fork, but a large fork to smash these. And I just use the edge of the bowl to smash the bananas. And because they are ripe, they smash fairly easily. Um, you could also probably use a potato masher if you like. Just be creative and do what you like to do. You can use a mixer, that is also an option. So I'm going to continue to mash these until I have them to the consistency that I like. Okay, so I've mashed it to the consistency that I want it to be where everything can mix in well. I'm gonna go ahead and add the unsweetened cocoa, all two tablespoons of it. Go ahead and mix that in well until it's completely mixed. And it's the bananas that sweeten this cookie up. You don't, it's all natural sweetener. You don't need any sugar or anything added to this. So I just go ahead and mix that in well. And then what you will do after that is you're going to add in three quarters of the cup of the rolling oats into the bowl, mix it in and see if it's like perfect or if you need to add a little bit more. So I go ahead and I do that. And like I said, I add three quarters of this cup in and then I go ahead and I stir those oats. Okay, so once I did that, I realized I needed the other quarter cup and I actually end up adding a little bit more. I don't know if I show that in the um, filming, but I do add another quarter cup. So I used a total of one and a quarter cups um, because I had a certain texture that I was looking for. So go ahead and mix everything in. And then what you're gonna wanna do after that is mix in as many chocolate chips as you like. Um, I just kind of sprinkle them in. I think I used roughly about a quarter to a half a cup and I just use semi-sweet. Feel free to use dark or you can use milk chocolate or you can use the little mini chips as well. And if you really want to, I guess you could use white chocolate chips if, you, if um, that's something that you prefer. And this is where I show you where I decided to add some more oats. So I think I scooped roughly about a third of a cup and I just sprinkle in a little bit at a time. So here is one of my secret ingredients that I decided to add, and this is a protein powder. This is plant-based, it's Orgain Simple. I get this at Costco. They don't have it all the time. This was a chocolate peanut butter. Um, I use this as breakfast replacement in the morning. So I added about two heaping tablespoons of that into the mix, and you go ahead and mix that in. I like just having that added protein powder just to break it up a little bit and just to give it a little bit more texture. It also helps in giving these cookies just a little bit more nutritional value to go with the other ingredients. So it's just a really good add-in. So the next ingredient I wanna add just for a little bit of extra flavor is my pure vanilla extract. And I use, I just take the cap off of my vanilla and I use about a half a cap full, pour that in there and then mix that in well. Should have told you this in the beginning, but you want your oven to be on 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I use a cookie scoop and I just take it and I scoop 
one scoop and put it on to the cookie sheet. I also put parchment paper on my cookie sheet just so I don't have to grease it. But if you don't have parchment paper, you can go ahead and grease the pan with a spray grease. But go ahead and keep scooping. And you don't have to put them too far apart because they do not they do not really change shape. And as you will see, I'm gonna kind of press them down and put them into a cookie shape so that as they cook, you get, because um, they, they, they aren't gonna spread out on their own. So then you're going to get more of that cookie shape instead of a ball. Um, I used the bottom of a glass and as you can see, it sticks. It was not the best thing I did. I even tried greasing the bottom of the glass and that didn't work either. So just make sure your hands are clean and you can press them down with your hand. You can use the palm of your hand. It's probably a little bit easier, but I was trying to be a little bit more uh, health conscious. Even though my hands were very clean, I'd washed them a million times, but I tried everything possible and Basically, this is how I ended up doing it anyway, and then just kind of pulling it off with my finger from the glass. So here they are all ready to go into the preheated oven and you are going to cook these for approximately 9 to 11 minutes depending on how you like them, whether you like them a little bit softer or maybe a little bit crunchier. I go ahead and do the 11 on the first batch just to kind of see how they turn out and I really liked um, the consistency of them. I think I did my second batch at 10 minutes just to make them a little bit softer, but they are really, really easy to come off the pan with the parchment paper and I just kind of scoop them onto a paper plate and let them cool. Now, here's a little twist you can do. For those of you that love Reese's peanut butter cups. This is a good way to get in some peanut butter with that chocolate and it's a nice consistency. I'm using some crunchy peanut butter that I have and while the cookies are still warm, this is my second batch of cookies here. While they're still warm, I'm taking a little bit of peanut butter and putting it on top so that the peanut butter kind of melts over the top of the cookie. Now this is just an option. You don't have to do this, but let me just tell you, I love peanut butter. So this was a really nice addition to these cookies. Thank you for watching and make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell and I'd love it if you'd give me a thumbs up and please leave your comments below on maybe some future ideas of things you'd like to see me do. Until next time, next video, God bless everyone.